So throughout my time playing Borderlands 3 across all four Vault Hunters and multiple different playthroughs, I've come across just about every legendary weapon you can find, and I've covered the majority of the best weapons in videos on the channel. But what I haven't covered yet is some of the worst weapons I've managed to come across. So in this video, I'm going to be covering my list of 10 of the worst legendary weapons you can find in Borderlands 3. Now before we begin, this list is obviously subjective, so any weapons you think should have made it onto the list or maybe shouldn't have been on the list, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. However, one weapon I think most of you will agree is just downright trash is a weapon known as the Lob. Now the Lob is a legendary shotgun that is manufactured by Torg, and out of all of the places that this weapon has a higher chance to drop from, it's Grave Ward. Yes, this weapon can drop from Grave Ward. Now it can also be a well drop as well. And uh, just to mention, you know, Grave Ward is one of the bosses that you will come across uh, during the main story. And he is farmable from the floating tomb region of Eden 6. Now what makes the lob so trash is the way the weapon works. And of course, to begin, it doesn't do that much damage at all. And uh, it basically fires a single slow moving elemental orb that passes through enemies and again does very little damage. Now because it passes through enemies you can hit multiple enemies at the same time and if you do shoot the floor or a wall it does do splash damage. And also if you're fighting bosses as well it cannot pass through them. Now taking a look at the statistics for this thing of course the level 50 version will be shown on screen. I tend not to go too deep into the actual stats because these are all subject to change and oftentimes with weapons they may look good on paper but then operate completely trash so yeah but in terms of the red text for this thing it states everything has to be magical in which I have no idea what this reference is so if you do know be sure to let me know in the comment section below but what I can say is the weapon quite frankly just isn't magical at all. So yeah, that's the lob, that is the starting weapon of the list, and now let's jump into the next one. So for the next weapon of the video, we have the Masterwork Crossbow. Now, some people do like this, and some people don't. For me, I just cannot get on with this weapon at all. It's a legendary sniper rifle that is manufactured by Hyperion, and I've got this multiple times. I actually got it on my very first playthrough. It drops from an enemy known as Eurist Muck Enforcer in the Electricity region of Promethea, kind of in the underground section in this location on the map. And yeah, I got this on my first playthrough. When I first saw the weapon, I thought it was going to be amazing. Statistically, it does quite a lot of damage and it comes with all of these different boosts in the weapon's description. You have weapon damage boost, weapon fire rate boost, weapon accuracy. And when you see that, you think, oh my god, this weapon's gonna be good. But then when you're using it in game, it's a whole different story. Being that the name of the weapon is the Masterwork Crossbow, it essentially shoots out crossbow bolts. Now, the problem with this is those bolts have a parabolic trajectory, meaning that they curve down very, very quickly. And that, in addition to the fact that it has a fixed magazine size of one, make this a very tedious gun to use. You'll pretty much have to always lead your shots and you'll always have to aim above the enemy's head to even get a critical hit with this thing. Now granted, I will say it does do a good amount of damage, but compared to other sniper rifles, it just doesn't hold up, especially on modes like Mayhem 3 and Mayhem 4. I mean, you guys may think differently about this one, but for me, I just have never been able to get on with it. It's just something that I've never really liked to use. And it's something that I just have always thought is not that good for a sniper rifle. Now again, the weapon view will be shown on screen. Um, you know, the statistically it does look good on paper. And the red text for this thing is all craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality, which is a reference to the video game Dwarf Fortress. So yeah, that's the masterwork crossbow and let's jump into the next one. So for the next legendary weapon of the video, we have the Bankrolled Predatory Lending. This is a weapon that you will come across very early on in the game, and for a lot of you, it was probably the first legendary weapon you managed to get a hold of. This can be found in the Droughts region from an enemy known as Lavender Crawley in this location on the map. 
And basically what this gun does is it uses your cash balance as ammunition. So each shot that you shoot from this thing will deduct $1 from your bank balance, I guess. And because of that, it's just not good, especially in the early stages of the game. Now granted, it is kind of cool. Um, it does have like these banknotes and coin and green money symbols uh, that can be seen when the gun is fired. But in my opinion, the gun doesn't do enough damage to warrant the fact that it's taking your money. It's more of a gimmicky weapon, which I believe is kind of a reference to EA and all the stupid shenanigans they get up to um, with kind of just ripping off the community and stuff like that. Not entirely sure about that, but it's definitely on the gimmicky side of things. Now, the red text for this one is bullets are cheap, but not that cheap, which is simply a reference to how the gun works. The weapon is also manufactured by Hyperion, so it has the signature shield that you have on pretty much all Hyperion weapons. And yeah, that's the weapon. Um, you know, it's not incredibly bad when it comes to its damage output, but again, it's just nowhere near as good as it should be given the fact that it takes your money. Now granted, you know, later on in the game, you're probably gonna have more than enough money to do whatever the hell you want with, but overall, it's just not that good. Coming up next, we have the Malax Bane. This is another legendary sniper rifle, but this time it's manufactured by Dahl. Now this can be obtained from an enemy known as Phoenix, who is in the Splinterlands region of Pandora in this location on the map. And what this weapon essentially does is it shoots a projectile that bounces twice. And it also has an alternative firing mode that is a shotgun. This shotgun will fire five projectiles and draws from the same magazine as the main firing mode. It also consumes two ammo per shot. And again, it's another weapon that is just not good at all. I know I'm saying that a lot, but yeah, you know, it's just the truth of the matter. Um, but I mean, I guess all the weapons really are bad on this list considering it's the worst weapons list. But yeah, uh, you know, in shotgun mode, the gun is dreadful. Do not use that if you have the weapon. You're better off sticking to the normal firing mode. And generally speaking, for a sniper rifle, it just does very little damage. It looks pretty cool though, which is, I guess, uh, an upside to the weapon. And uh, as for its statistics, they will be shown on screen. And the red text for this one is Welcome to the End, which is a reference to the South Dweller song, Welcome to the End. That said, welcome to the end. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the Malax Bane in the comment section below. Every time I've used the thing, I just didn't like it, so I've just resorted to using other sniper rifles. But on things like Mayhem 3 and Mayhem 4, I just didn't see this weapon doing good at all. Next up, we have the Mind Killer, and uh, this is another one of the legendary weapons that you can get early on in the game. Uh, it's basically a legendary shotgun that is manufactured by Maliwan, and uh, you can find this off Mouthpiece. Again, the first boss fight you will come across. Now, it is a pretty good shotgun to use in the early stages, but a level 50 variant on Mayhem 3 and Mayhem 4 does not do good compared to other shotguns in the game. In my opinion, this is on the lower end of the legendary shotguns in the game. However, it is pretty cool. The weapon basically has very unique effects when shooting the thing and hipfire shots basically shoot nine pellets in a circle with one in the middle. However, when you zoom in with the weapon, the pellets fire in a plus pattern. It also comes with boost to the weapon charge speed and weapon damage and cannot spawn with an element. It also has the red text, I must not fear, fear is the mind killer, which is a reference to Dune, the 1965 novel by Frank Herbert. This is one that's probably a little bit controversial to be on the list, but it's just my opinion. This is just my list of some of the worst weapons you can find in Borderlands 3. And that leads us into the next one, which is the Super Ball. Now, the Super Ball is a legendary pistol that is manufactured by Maliwan, and this drops from an enemy known as Baron Nagin in the Meridian Metroplex of Promethea. Now, in terms of what the weapon does, uh, just to begin, the weapon is always incendiary and shoots out small fireballs in a downward arc that bounce off surfaces. Now, because of the way it shoots and its general load damage, it just isn't viable to use on the higher end modes. I mean, you probably could get by on your first playthrough using this thing, but 
overall it's you know again not that good of a weapon although i will say like some of the other weapons on this list it's pretty cool and does have a really cool reference as well so going over to the weapon view for this thing you can see that it does have the red text flower power which with the way the weapon shoots is a reference to super mario bros where mario shoots similar projectiles after consuming a fire flower of course, this also references the gun being always incendiary. And to be honest, this is one of the things I love about Borderlands. I love the fact that they reference certain games and certain small things here and there with their weapons. And, you know, while some of the weapons in the game might not be that good, um, they can be a little bit gimmicky and just really cool. So, yeah, that's my opinion on this weapon. And now moving on to the next one. Up next we have the Tunguska, now this is a legendary rocket launcher that is yet again manufactured by Torg. Now the Tunguska is a returning weapon from Borderlands 2 but this time instead of being a pearlescent weapon it's of course a legendary weapon. Now to obtain the weapon if you for some reason want to obtain it, it drops from an enemy known as Chunk Stump who spawns in the Floodmore Basin region of Eden 6 in this location on the map. So when you basically shoot the Tunguska and impact an enemy or the ground around them, it will then redirect the rocket up into the air and then explode. And this is actually a pretty big downside to the weapon. You kind of have to wait for that secondary explosion uh, to go up into the air before the weapon really does that much damage. But even with that, compared to things like the Scourge, you know, the Jericho, the Purple Rarity rocket launcher like the Lump, and pretty much most of the other rocket launches in the game, it just doesn't hold up damage wise. Taking a look at the statistics here, we can see that this one has the red text, Crack the Sky, which is a reference to the 2009 studio album called Crack the Sky by the band known as Mastodon. Now the name of the weapon being Tunguska, I believe also refers to the Tunguska event, which is a mysterious explosion that happened in 1908 which flattened 2,000 square kilometers of the Siberian tundra. A crazy, crazy event there. So that is the Tunguska, and uh, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this one. Another legendary weapon that I think is just a little bit too tedious to use is the Nimble Jack. The Nimble Jack is a legendary shotgun manufactured by Jacobs, and is obtainable from one of Zero's target of opportunities known as Handsome Jackie in the Skywire 27 region of Promethea. This is located right here on the map for anyone who wants to pick the weapon up. And in terms of what the weapon does, I'm sure a lot of you already know, but it basically gains heavily increased accuracy when the character is airborne, and critical hits also do not consume ammo. So basically when you're jumping around, you pretty much have pinpoint accuracy, and uh, yeah, that's how the weapon works. Aside from that, it's kind of like any other just normal rarity Jacob shotgun. It does have a little bit above average statistics, but overall compared to some of the other shotguns in the game, it just doesn't hold up. It's kind of tedious in the fact that you have to keep jumping to make the most out of the weapon. It can be good in the Skywire 27 region if you're on your first playthrough of the game and is quite a fun weapon to use. But again, it's more of a gimmicky weapon in my opinion. Taking a look at the weapon view for this thing, it does have the red text, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump up and kill lunatics, which is a reference to the nursery rhyme, Jack be nimble. I mean, I know I'm saying this a lot, but truly let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on this weapon. I just don't think it's that good personally. But that was the Nimble Jack and now moving on to the next weapon of the list. So coming in for the second last weapon of the video, and this one I believe is gonna be a bit controversial again, we have the Storm. Now the Storm is a legendary sniper rifle manufactured by Hyperion, and it drops from Katagawa Jr in the Atlas headquarters on Promethea. The weapon is always shock and it shoots in a very unique way. When you shoot the thing, uh, it spawns four shock orbs around the impact point and these generate kind of like elemental coils that would damage the enemy over time. The problem with this weapon that I have is the DPS. You have a charge up time when shooting it. 
Um, it's just a little bit annoying. And I just feel like the orbs don't do great amounts of damage. Now, I know some people do like the weapon. I know some people say that it's pretty damn good on Amara. But again, comparing this to some of the other legendary snipers, the head explosion, the Layuda, stuff like that, it just doesn't come anywhere close to those. Now granted, I know that there's tons of legendary weapons in this game and some are going to be better than others, but on Mayhem 3 and Mayhem 4 and even True Vault Hunter mode and stuff like that, I just haven't managed to make a good use of this thing. And maybe that's a me problem, who knows, but yeah, I didn't really get on with the weapon. Um, it is pretty cool though, I do like the way it shoots and it does come defaultly with the Thunderhead skin. And uh, the red text for this one is, tut tut, it looks like rain which is a reference to the 1966 animated featurette, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree. And that's it for the storm. I thought I'd include it on this list. You know, just to mention, there is a lot of weapons that could have made it in here uh, very, very easily and potentially have replaced the storm as well. But who knows, maybe we'll do a part two to this video very soon. And then for the final weapon of the video, we have the Magnificent. This is a legendary pistol manufactured by Dahl. And in terms of what it does, it's pretty much just a full auto pistol with a high magazine size, high fire rate, and high reload time. The problem is, with all of those benefits, it comes with reduced damage, and it consumes ammo very, very quickly. Now for the amount of damage you're putting out and the amount of ammo you're consuming, of course for you most players out there who are running an ammo regen build, you kind of don't have to worry about that. But again, for the damage it puts out, it just isn't worth using. It can also come in different variations like a taser version and maybe if you get an anointed version of this, it would be good. But again, in my opinion, this is just one of those weapons that I just left in my vault for a long time and didn't really end up using. Now in terms of the red text and statistics for this one, um, I'm going to try and pronounce this, but I'm most definitely going to butcher it. This is by far the craziest red text in the game. But uh, it says, Yadesh na den kleba beri na nedelu? I, 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 you know what? I just know I've butchered that. But yeah, basically, uh, the flavor text is Russian and translates in English to going somewhere for a day, take bread for a week. In which I'm not sure if that's a quote or maybe a reference to something else, but that is what it translates to. So yeah, I mean, that's the Magnificent. Not really too much more to talk about other than the fact that I just don't think it's that good. And that's pretty much it for the video. Again, this list is very subjective and probably a little bit controversial. But I mean, that's just my opinion, right? I mean, we all have different opinions on what weapons work and what weapons we think are good and maybe fits our playstyle and stuff. So be sure to leave your thoughts on what some of the worst weapons in the game are in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video today, be sure to leave a like as well. It's always greatly appreciated on the channel. Other than that, hope you enjoyed. And if you want to check out what some of the best weapons in the game are, click on this video on screen now. Peace.